Hello and welcome to the Learning Centre. In this short video we are going to discuss the topic of getting the most from your readings and look at six steps for reading success. Before we begin, we acknowledge the Australian Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander peoples as the first inhabitants of the nation and acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands where our staff and students live, learn and work. These are the six steps that you need to be an effective reader. They include positive feelings, reading for purpose, being a selective reader, being a smart reader, being an efficient and focused reader, and being an active and effective reader. Let's talk about reading. Reading underpins everything that we do in academia. We read to think, we read to think to read broadly and deeply on a topic, we read to speak credibly, we read to think further by clarifying our thoughts, and we, we read to write. And writing often helps clarify um, and solidify our interpretations of what we read. We also read to obtain information and answering the questions of what, where, when and who. And we use reading to understand information and the author's perspective um, to answer the questions of why, why not and how. So we also use reading to find support for one's personal perspective and to address the question of evidence and um, adding weight to your own argument. Many of the texts that you read um, will have been recommended by your course tutor or they'll be on your reading list and you will need to read them in order to complete the assessments and the assignments. These could include essays or reports. The reading will help you to take part in academic discussions and will help you to give a presentation. If you enjoy the course of study, you might also get a lot of pleasure from reading these texts. But pleasure is not the main purpose for reading in academia. Let's look at the first step, positive feelings about reading. There are four basic reading practices that you'll need to apply at university. However, if you have mixed or negative feelings about reading, or you only read because you have to, it can be helpful to uh, work on your feelings about reading and generate positive feelings. So you can think about how the reading might apply to your future professional practice. Um, think about how the reading will help you to achieve your goal, which might be to complete assessment or the subject or complete the degree. And you can actively try and in increase your enjoyment of reading. If you can find a way to enjoy reading more, over time you will develop more effective reading habits. So you should think of some ways that you can make reading more enjoyable for you. You can note these down, maybe three ways of reading. Note them down somewhere that you can see and can do something with that list every day and really make a point of practicing these three strategies. The second step is reading with purpose. It is really important to have a purpose for reading and we always need to keep this purpose in mind. To do this start with your general purpose and that could be obtaining information or understanding ideas or theories or understanding the author's viewpoint or supporting your own view with evidence and develop specific questions that need answering. For example, to address this assessment topic, how might Erickson's theory of lifespan develop apply to working with youths in the youth justice system? Some questions you can prepare beforehand would include what are lifespan theories? Why are lifespan theories important? Do these theories apply to the justice space? What do the lifespan theories say about that age group? Do these theories explain behaviour? Any of these sorts of questions can help you when you are reading. So they give you a purpose. And they also give you different ways and levels of engaging with a text. When you read to reveal, you're reading in preparation for lectures and you're revealing the key points about a topic. You're revealing new sources, you're revealing new data, you're trying to add knowledge to what you already know through the lectures and the tutorials that will lead on to preparation for assessments and exam. We're also reading to review. So when you're reviewing, you're going over what you have already read and you're trying to boost your understanding of something and this can involve following up on recommended readings from your lecturers. They'll be pointing you towards valuable sources of information or other experts in the field or different ideas. And by the time you are reading to remind what you've already learned, you've already got a really good understanding of the topic. Nevertheless, reminding yourself of what you have learned is essential for exam preparation. So these are three common purposes 
of reading at uh, academic levels. Let's talk a bit more about reading to reveal. So the purpose is to reveal the key ideas to help us understand a topic and we are also reading something new or looking at data and one strategy that we can use for this is uh, skimming and scanning. So this is when you're reading through a text rapidly in order to get a general overview of the material. We're not reading in, in great depth and scanning is also doing uh, a rapid read but in order to find very specific facts or information. You should know that you'll need to practice these skills regularly to become better at your proficiency. Reading to review is often the most neglected of reading purposes and many students think about it only just before exam period but I would argue that it is one of the most important types of reading. So reviewing information regularly can save you a lot of time and effort later in the study period, particularly when you're getting into the larger assignments. Um, and because you're reviewing regularly, you have more chances of deepening your understanding of a topic. Reviewing regularly is a very strong method of preparing for the end of study period exams. So when we talk about reading to review, it really starts in day one, week one. Take 15 or 20 minutes per subject per day, going over your notes about what you've covered that day. It could be in the lecture, the tutorial, workshop, lab or field trip and so on. That 15 or 20 minutes is time and energy well spent and that investment will benefit you later. It can also be really invaluable to your learning if you review your assessment feedback. Your lecturer or a tutor might give you some comments on your work and reviewing it is really beneficial because you can see how your mark or your grade was derived, you can identify what your lecturer considered uh, about what you did, what was your strong qualities in your work. You can use it as feedback, as a guide for how you can improve in future. It can also be a really strong motivator to act on uh, for future assessments and it helps you to develop your ability to monitor, evaluate and regulate your own learning and understand how you can improve your reading strategies in future to get more relevant information. So we also read to remind and as with the reading to review, reading to remind also starts from day one, week one of the study period and when reading to remind yourself of something, you should consider making some new notes. Uh, we can also use more skimming and scanning strategies when reading to remind ourselves of something. Another benefit of reading to remind is that it helps with the rate of forgetting. We know from the literature that the more often we review something over time, the more likely it is we will remember it for a significant time period. And as you can see in this graph, there are some key time frames that we can target to improve our efficiency here.